months to a year, um, I finally got to play girls after that, and now that's all I get cast as. So. <laughs> but it's, I don't care what I play, like I love doing the work, so I'm really glad that it happened the way I did. That's awesome. um, yeah, my story is way less interesting. Um, I uh, just started acting when I was six. I wanted to be on Barney, and uh, that was like my, that was my ultimate goal. Um, I knew, as a child, if I were on Barney, my life would be perfect. Um, I was never on Barney, so I don't know if my life would have been perfect. Um, but I, uh, started doing commercials and things like that after, like, proving, to, I had to prove to my parents that I wanted to do it by taking a lot of classes, because they knew it was a hard industry and didn't want me to do it. Um, but after I got signed with an agent, I met with the adult agent, and they needed a kid to do uh, like voiceover commercials for 7-Eleven. They needed a three-year-old to talk about the story of how Slurpees were made, with like some underground fairy and all these crazy things. And they couldn't find a three-year-old that could say all these big words. So at seven, I sounded like a three-year-old, and I got the job. And then I started doing voiceover, and because I was a kid, I just would leave school sometimes every day. Um, at lunch and do voiceover commercials and go back to school. And uh, then at 18, um, I had a lot of experience doing voiceover since I had done it all my life as a kid. And I just went to an audition at Funimation. And that was just like another random audition. Uh, they, I was like, this is so weird. It looks like anime, but it's not because it's not Dragon Ball Pokemon or uh, <laughs> Sailor Moon. And that's all anime is. Um, but my, the show that I auditioned for was for Peach Girl, and I got cast as Psy. And then uh, I, would be, I remember saying to the director, it would be so cool if you guys did like more of these shows. This would be so fun to like just do this all the time. And he was like, yeah, we have some other ones. I was like, really? Like a lot? He goes, oh, like a lot. Um, so they just kept inviting me back to audition for stuff, and I just kept getting work. And I always would say, um, I'll keep doing this as long as you guys will not lock me out. And they haven't. Cool. But it all started with the quest to be on Barney. <laughs> Dream big, kids. It's not too late, right? If, yeah, no. I could. I mean, if you could I be a could hobbit, be maybe you could Bob, be... right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions, guys? Uh, uh, yeah. Have you all ever seen the final season of Sailor Moon? I haven't seen the final season because I saw uh, a lot of what was on when it originally aired um, and then I didn't know how to get a hold of it um, after that. I mean, you got to remember, all I thought anime was is Pokemon, Dragon Ball, and uh, Sailor Moon. So if it wasn't on TV, where would I find it? Yeah. That was my understanding. Yeah. Um, so I haven't seen it yet. I haven't either, but the last season is stars, right? Yeah. Um, I'm super excited to, to find out, you know, just what happens in general, because I, I need to catch up with where I'm watching it. Um, that's why it's exciting that, you know, S is coming out soon. Yeah. But uh, I'm really excited to see how the dub handles stars and, like, the characters that are, like, yeah. men in the daytime and women in the nighttime. Yeah, like, it's super I don't know cool. how they're going to choose to, yeah. with the casting process. Is I don't be. even think they know right I know. now. They're just kind of, like, <laughs> They're like, let us get out. to yeah. super S first. But it's exciting because um, Shar, who does all the the marketing and stuff for Salem, is like a huge fan. Yeah. So I'm sure she'll she'll make it right. That's one of the things that I love about working on this this dub with Viz is everyone on the production team, which isn't always the case. Sometimes the production team is like they're producers. They're like, yeah. let's get the actors that fit the voices the best, but also can get it done the quickest so that we can try to get the most cost-effective dub and whatever else. With uh, Viz, they're so passionate about Sailor Moon. Everything is like, even if they're like, it's going to take more time, we want to make sure that the animation is clean, we want to make sure this is the best product, we want to make sure that it's approved by everybody and that everyone's happy, um, which is really, really nice. It makes me feel really confident about the final product going out to you guys is I'm like, well, I know it's gone through so many hands that love it so, so dearly. Uh, and it's nice to be a part of um, a team that cares so much about something. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, those are some of my favorite projects to work on where the client or the, the producers and all of them 
really care about what they're doing. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's just kind of like, you try to have as much fun with it as you can, but it almost feels like a chore sometimes. Yeah. Well, and sometimes when you, when I've worked on a couple projects where you'll do, you'll do a scene and the director will go, that was good. But after they keep going, that was good. You're like, wait, really? do you hate it? it really and you're bad? just like settling? Or <laughs> what is the deal? Um, the ones that I really like are the ones where the director goes, let's try it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Um, and they really, really want it perfect. And once they get it, you're like, okay, this is what they want. Yeah. I feel really confident about this. It's when they, usually when they move so fast. Now, if they, if they move fast on the scene, you're like, oh, I nailed that scene. And then you'll go to another scene and go, okay, they're taking their time. So they really did like that one scene. But it's when they're like, looks good. Yeah. You're like, I don't believe you anymore. <laughs> All the way in the back. Uh, Jeremy, what's your thoughts on uh, the new show that's coming out being called the Book of Witches? Oh, uh, Strike Witches, the movie? Oh, uh, it's, a, it's another series of Strike Witches. What is, is it? Is it a spinoff of Strike Witches? It's a different group. Oh, cool. Obviously, I know so much about it. Um, I can't, I'm really excited to watch it, actually. Um, Cause I, so it's just a different, uh, it's just like a different striker unit, or not a striker unit, it's just a, a different group of girls. Cool. Are you hoping that your character I mean, yeah, that would be awesome. I, I don't, I don't think she would be, um, unless she's just like, I'm gonna visit everybody that's making an anime about some strike witches. Um, but yeah, no, I would, I would be really interested to see how that works. I know that we worked on the movie and so I wonder if any of the new characters that were introduced in the movie are uh, in the in the series that you're talking about. Like if that's how it. Oh, is it really? I'll have to investigate. That would be really cool. Okay, cool. So it comes out in Japan in October. So it has, I, I would imagine Funimation would license it, but maybe not. Sometimes it's trickier than, yeah. than we think. Maybe it'd be like Sentai or Antiplex or something. Yeah, who knows? That would be cool. Thanks for letting me know. I'll have to check that out. That sounds fun. Hopefully it is Yoshika. Could be like, because don't they, um, I haven't seen it, but for that Soul Eater Not show, don't they yeah. make cameos in that or something? Um, for Soul Eater Not, uh, it was the like prequel to Soul Leader. So my characters showed up in Soul Leader not, but they were not the same type they were before. They, this is, okay, so. They were the ghetto bags. They were, they were really tough chicks. Yeah. And uh, they worked in Death Bucks, uh, which is a lot like Starbucks. Um, <laughs> imagine that. And so they were really tough girls. And um, in the, uh, in Soul Eater, my character was she she could be tough when she wanted to be, but for the most part, she was just a little, a little quirky, a little uh, off, uh, a little left of center, I guess, <laughs> which is what I loved so much. Cause I just had the freedom to be like such a weirdo. I was unleashed. That's really who I am inside. That's my spirit animal. <laughs> yes. Um, when you got to the to the fairy dance arc of Sword Art Online Season 1, and you saw like what uh, the situation Asuna was in, uh -huh. <laughs> what, what was that like, you know?